Hey guys, I'm going to do a little bit of an intro bit to update you all on where I've been, but if you're here purely for the content, go to the time that you see right here on screen, or check the link in the description for timestamps. Um, the last video that I made, as some of you guys might remember, I was gone for around a period of five days because of some personal stuff going on uh, before that video could be made. Now here I am about eight days later making this video because of some other crap that's been going on. I know, Witch Queen has been horrible for me as far as videos and streams go. Not at all how I envisioned Witch Queen going for me, but it is what it is. Um, after I posted my last video, I ended up coming down with a horrible sinus infection, which you guys can probably hear in my voice right now. I'm still suffering from it. Um, but it was a lot worse whenever I first got it. Uh, as you guys know, around that time period, the raid was like one or two days away, and me being myself and having waited on this raid for over a year, I pushed through doing the day one raid despite being damn near bedridden. I felt so bad. Um, you know, I was losing my voice. I was coughing, yada, yada. I did the day one raid anyways, and uh, it took us 22 hours, but we did get the 24-hour completion of Vow of the Disciples, so that was really, really, really cool, but it definitely did not come without consequences. Um, I'm going to let you guys listen to this clip of us finally killing the boss after 22 hours, so you can hear what I sounded like by the end of it. I'm popping, please, please, please. Go, 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 go. Yes! 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 22 oh hours, 22 oh hours, oh I'm sick as a fucking dog. Oh the next two to three days after that point, I had zero voice. My vocal cords were so inflamed and so damaged that I literally could not speak for the next two to three days. Which is why this video is coming out as late as it is, and why there has been no videos between now and the last one that I made. I just wanted to update you guys. If you guys do follow me on Twitter, which I, I highly recommend that you all do if you care about the channel and the content, um, I highly recommend that you do because I've been updating you guys over there. There have been no Twitch streams. I didn't even stream the day one. That's how bad I felt. And of course, the day one means everything to me every single year. Uh, and, you know, it, it's really sucked, honestly, it really has, but I'm feeling better now. I'm hoping that we can get consistent videos going forward, starting with this one today. So I hope you guys do enjoy this video today. I've been waiting so long to getting back to content creation, so I hope you all enjoy, and I'll see you guys next time. New raid weapons, everybody. It's been a while since I've been able to say something like that, but here we are. Last time we took a look at raid weapons, one, I wasn't nearly as sick, and two, they were from Vault of Glass, and many of them immediately took the title of best in slot as they were that good, and honestly, a lot of the same can be said here. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be doing a god roll guide for the Vow of the Disciple raid weapons. We're going to be going over each weapon's best perks, how to farm them, and finally ranking them from best to worst. Before we jump into it, I haven't made a video in a very long time, so if you could please support the content by leaving a like, and perhaps commenting down below what you had for breakfast, I would greatly appreciate it. And without further ado, let's jump into this. First up, let's discuss the process of farming out and finally crafting these raid weapons. Taking a look at this loot table put together by Nemu the Great, we can see the following. If you're wanting to farm out the SMG, you'll find it inside the first three encounters. For the Pulse, this will be gotten only from the two bosses, Caretaker and Rolk, alongside the Waveframe GL. The Fusion will drop in the first and third, and the Linear Fusion will come from the first two encounters. And finally, the Raid Glaive is exclusive to Rolk, which will be at the final encounter. All of these weapons can be bought at the end of the raid for spoils, and collecting 5 red box versions of these guns and extracting the resonance out of them will make them craftable for you at the Enclave. Now, crafting these weapons is definitely going to be interesting, as unlike the other legendaries in the game, these raid weapons have unique crafting mats associated with them. The first of which is Drowned Alloy, which you get for dismantling the raid weapons and is used for crafting their frames back at the Enclave. The other material is known as Drowned Element, and is gotten from what I believe will be extracting resonance out of the Red Box Adept Raid weapons that we'll be getting as drops whenever Master Mode comes out. 
So now that you know how to get your hands on these weapons, how the crafting works, and how to get those materials, let's take a look at them in order of best to worst and go over each weapon's best perk combos. Kicking things off, we need to talk about what potentially might be my favorite weapon in the entire game, and I don't even have it yet. Shout out to my clanmate Papai for the gameplay you're about to see, here we have the Insidious Arc Aggressive Frame Pulse Rifle. Not only are we finally getting our second ever non-sunset aggressive frame, but this thing has the nastiest perk selection I think I've ever seen on a weapon post Black Armory, so let's dive in. In the first column, we have a perk that is traditionally only ever seen in the second column, and that is Dragonfly. This is the first time I think we've seen this in the first column since the Black Armory Age. We also have Stats for All, which is one of this expansion's best reload perks, Sleight of Hand, which is a new perk that is basically Harmony if it gave a stat increase, but I don't recommend it here on the weapon, I just wanted to explain what it does. And moving on, we also have Demo, again a traditional second column perk, and lastly, Rapid Hit. An absolutely stacked first column of perks right there. And moving on to the second, we have One For All, we also have the new Bait and Switch perk, which gives a 20% damage increase for a limited time to your pulse after dealing damage with both your special and heavy, again just explaining what it does don't think it's all that good for this weapon and we also have vorpal weapon and adrenaline junkie to end things off when it comes to the god roll on this weapon you have so many options the first one i want to explore is dragonfly one for all which will probably be the role that i personally go for apparently after enhancing the perk dragonfly in the enclave it'll actually give you a reload buff after a headshot kill on top of the explosion similar to firefly if this reload speed is noticeable, we're looking at a roll that gives an explosion on kill, reload buff, and a 35% damage increase for 10 seconds after tagging 3 enemies. That's the roll that I'm personally going to be going for, but we have a lot of others too. You could of course go for stats for all 1 for all, demo 1 for all, or if you want to fully spec into a grenade build because void 3.0 is just absolutely cracked right now, you could definitely do adrenaline junkie in that final column. If your goal is to tear down champions, a role like Rapid It and Vorpal Weapon wouldn't be a bad shout either. This pulse has easily become best in slot for arc pulse rifles in the game, and is single handedly my most hyped weapon out of the weapon set. Now moving on from Insidious, what if I told you that you could have Salvager Salvo, but better as your grenade launcher? Introducing the Forbearance Arc Waveframe GL. The only reason I feature this weapon lower than Insidious is because of my own personal bias as a player when it comes to the kinds of content I play in Destiny. I play a lot of GMs and personally would never see myself bringing this inside of Grandmasters with me, but just know that this weapon could easily be number one depending on the type of player that you are. Anyways, Forbearance is the only Arc Waveframe GL that we have in Destiny, and only one of two currently in the game next to Deafening Whisper. While Deafening Whisper may have volatile rounds on its side due to it being void, Forbearance has the sheer power of ridiculous perk combinations as well as an excellent origin trait that comes alongside all the raid weapons. Firstly though, let's take a look at the perks. Here in the first column we have Unrelenting, Stats for All, Sleight of Hand which isn't that bad on this weapon, as well as Ambitious Assassin. To pair with these perks we have our second column which features One for All, Rampage, and lastly, yes you see that correctly, Chain Reaction. The god role I'm personally going to pursue is probably going to be Unrelenting Chain Reaction which is going to pair beautifully with the Soul Drinker Origin trait which will give me health after kills and reloading. Of course you could not spec into being a full on tank and go with something more familiar like Ambitious and Chain Reaction, but either way, pretty much any of the perks that I've listed are going to go crazy on this thing. Up next from Forbearance, we have a new linear in town, taking the title of best in slot for solar and also the title of best ammo economy. Here we have the Cataclysmic. Unlike weapons like Reed's Regret which roll triple tap, this linear takes it up a step and brings 4th times the charm to the table. Now unfortunately, this will hinder this weapon's usability in things like Grandmaster Nightfalls since proccing a perk like this on a target that isn't super beefy can be troublesome. However, this trade-off comes with the bonus that it's even better inside of raid content since everything is beefy with a capital beef. The perk roll you're going to want on this thing is 4th times with either Focus Fury for that 20% damage buff after 3 headshots or high impact reserves which you'll get the damage buff from quite often as you'll be dipping low and high over and over again with 4th times proccing throughout a damage phase. You could also go the route of clown cartridge in the second column to just fully spec into overall damage, 
but not many damage phases will last long enough for you to fully take advantage of a crazy roll like that, but it does sound fun. Anyways, long story short, this will become essentially the go-to raid linear, while reeds will stay king in every other aspect of the game, while also closely contending with Cataclysmic inside of raid content. Moving on from Cataclysmic, we have what might be the best kinetic SMG in the game, at least as far as 900 RPMs go, and that is the Submission. This SMG comes with what looks to be the highest zoom value from any 900 RPM at 17, giving it pretty great range stats which 900 RPMs don't often get. Looking at the perks, we have monster perks in the first column, like overflow and subsistence, which will always go well in an SMG, and in the second column, we have frenzy, demo, and swash. Subsistence Frenzy is probably the god roll I'm going to chase, although there's a nice combo to be had with Sleight of Hand and Harmony here if that's your thing. If you're someone like me that also uses Controverse Warlock, Demo in that final column is definitely not to be ignored. I'm not a super big fan of this SMG, as we kinda already have a powerhouse in that slot in the form of the multi mock with Subsistence one for all. But Submission is of course farmable, has better stats, and can get enhanced perks, so that's definitely not to be ignored here. Up next from Submission, we have the best in slot legendary kinetic fusion, the Deliverance. Get it? Because this is the first ever kinet- okay, never mind. Deliverance is a stasis fusion rifle, meaning that it of course finds itself in the kinetic slot, and because of this, has opened up a whole new avenue of build variety as fusion gamers are no longer forced to go without an elemental primary when wielding their favorite voop voops. This fusion comes with some spicy rolls too, so let's take a peek. In the first column, we have demo, cornered, as well as sleight of hand, and in the second column, we have surrounded, harmony, adrenaline junkie, as well as chill clip. Some roles of note here are of course Demo Adrenaline, Sleight of Hand and Harmony, and a super cool sounding one, pun intended, could actually be Compulsive Reloader paired with Chill Clip to take full advantage of those stasis rounds at the top of the mag. This is a fusion that I personally don't see myself using that much, but I know a lot of people will, and this has been a weapon they've been waiting for a long time, so have at it. Lastly for the video, we have a weapon and a weapon type that I really, really don't like that much, and it kind of saddens me if I'm being honest. Our sixth weapon of the video, Lubre's Ruin, the Solar Glaive. I just, I don't know man, glaives are fun and all, but I really don't see them ever being useful in the content that I play, and honestly, with things like Blinding Nades, the new Waveframe GL that can chain combust everything, and just any other special weapon out there, I just don't see myself using glaives as my special weapon of choice, and I simply just have not been ever since Witch Queen came out. That said, I know there are some glaive enjoyers out there that might enjoy this one as well, so let's talk the perks. In the first column, we have Grave Robber, a movable object which gives energy when blocking and shooting an enemy, as well as Sleight of Hand. In the final column, we have Unrelenting, Surrounded, Vorpal, as well as Swash. For god rolls, Grave Robber and Swash doesn't sound bad, and a movable object might could pair nicely with Unstoppable Force. All in all though, I didn't really find the Enigma to be all that special, and this weapon seems even less so for me personally. Let me know down in the comments though what you guys think about Glaives, as I'm genuinely curious to see if I'm in the minority, but I just don't really like this weapon type all that much. With all that said though, that's going to wrap up yet another video here on the channel. I'm really happy to be finally back at video making as I've just had a really rough time with not feeling healthy enough to do so and being away from making videos right at the launch of a new expansion just really sucks. Uh, I know my voice is still pretty rough in this video and I hope that that didn't kind of bring down the enjoyment of the video, um, that I couldn't be as energetic and stuff as normal, but I really do hope that you guys did enjoy the content today. And hopefully as the days go on, my voice will get better and my content can hopefully be a little bit more upbeat going forward. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, I sincerely ask that you leave a like to support the channel, and if you're new here, definitely feel free to subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching all the way until the end, you guys watching right now are absolute legends, and I'll see you guys next time.